So in this video, we introduce the new concept about linear independence of vectors. And please look at what I've written down here. Let's say you're given n vectors, v1 to vn. We call this set of vectors linearly independent. If um, when you look at the vector equation like this, um, the only possible solution to this vector equation is that all constants attached to the vector v1 to vn are actually zero. So we'd like to solve for the special case where the whole vector space has certain dimension, let's say n, which is exactly the same as the number of vectors given in such problem. I would like to emphasize that in this case, the use of determinant is very helpful. So please look at the current case. Let's say you're looking at a two-dimensional space, and I give you the same number of vectors as the dimension of the space. Let's say you're having this case. So you see, um, if I ask you whether these two vectors are linearly independent, so please go to the definition. The definition is that you have to look at such an equation. And you see how many solutions you have for the coefficients c1, c2. If the only possible solution is that both are zero, then it's done. It means the answer is yes. And um, once again, same as the last couple of videos, whenever you see such a vector equation, automatically it is equivalent to certain linear system. And let me write down the computations here. So you see for these vector equations, we can make the x coordinate equal and also make the y coordinate equal. It means that we are actually getting a system with two equations and two unknowns. So it's like a square system in the sense that the coefficient matrix is a square matrix, right? Which allows us to take the determinant. And let me put some notes here. You see, it is a two equations, two unknown system, exactly because the number of vector given is uh, the same as the dimension of the whole space. Then we get the number of equations as the same number of unknowns here. And now, and we trust that you can solve this system quite quickly, but we just need to make use of determinants. Uh, so please recall that whenever the determinant is non-zero, it means this system must have exactly one solution. And of course, in the homogeneous case here where the right hand side is all zeros, the only solution is C1 equals zero and C2 equals zero, which means these two vectors in that case um, are linearly independent as long as the determinant is non-zero. So let me write a note here. So please look at what I've written down. Um, everything is connected in the sense that knowing the properties of determinant help you solve the linear system. And also, uh, in a special case where it is homogeneous, uh, we understand that the exactly one solution means both solutions of C1, C2 must be zero. And this fact automatically helps us to answer the current problem, whether two vectors are independent. Of course, now the answer is yes. V1, V2 are independent, right? They are independent uh, simply because this determinant is non-zero. So um, let me put it this way. So you see, um, the question whether they are independent or not, in a special case that the dimension of the vector space is the same as the number of given vector, is simply the same as computing the determinant of the n by n matrix where the columns are basically the vectors given. And uh, that's the note I can give you. And you may be wondering why I'm looking at this particular matrix. Let's go back to the previous example. You see, if you look at the first example again, this is the V1, this is the V2. And you see this one is exactly the same as the first column. The V2 is the same as the second column. Not a coincidence. If you trace all the steps to see how I write this linear system down, you'll see why the vectors V1, V2 are basically listed as columns when you compute the determinant, right? And um, that's the same as my note here. So the remaining case we try to understand is uh, the other case. For example, let's say the dimension of the space is not the same as the number of given vectors. I would like to look at this case first. So the first case to look at is the dimension of the whole space is less than the number of given vectors. So I'll give you an example now. So let's look at the current case. You see the dimension of the space is two and the number of given vector is three, right? So it belongs to our current case here. And in that case, when you write all the equations down, we are not expecting to see a linear system with a coefficient matrix having the square size. Let's take a look together. So you see I'm writing this linear system down so fast because we understand that for such a vector equation, we should be getting a linear system where the left-hand side are basically listing the given vectors v1 to v3 as columns, right? You see, let's look at this system now. You basically have only two equations. 
based on the fact that you get the two equations by by equating the x coordinate and the y coordinate separately, right? And but however, you have three unknowns. The three unknowns are actually c1, c2, c3. And in such a system, we don't have enough information to solve for c1, c2, c3. But anyway, um, if you try to solve it, can you see what's happening? Basically, in such cases. Uh, we understand that um, there should be more than one solution in the homogeneous system because um, we really don't have enough equations to solve for all the unknowns. So let me write it this way. So please, my note here for homogeneous system, if we don't have enough equations uh, to determine all the unknowns, there should be infinitely many solutions apart from the obvious solution where C1, C2, C3 are zeros. So it means what? It, because we have infinitely many solutions in uh, such an equation, right? So uh, the infinitely many solutions, it basically means that our current system of vectors, they are not independent linearly. And theoretically, let's look at this red statement more carefully. This fact basically means what? This fact basically means whenever you look at the situation that the number of vectors given is higher than the dimension of the whole space, there's no chance uh, the current problem can be linearly independent for all the vectors given. So let me put it this note here. So um, please look at my note here. And if in this case, the answer is actually obvious, which means um, the answer is always not linearly independent for the vectors given. And now I think the remaining case we haven't discussed so far is the case where the dimension of the whole space is actually larger than the number of vectors given. And in that case, there's no shortcut. You really have to solve the problem. So let me put a problem here for you. So you say I'm giving you a three-dimensional space, but I actually give you only two vectors. So it is uh, under our condition here. And if you write down the vector equation here, once again, it is equivalent to a linear system. And now the linear system has three equations because you actually have um, three coordinates to make the left and the right side equal, right? But we have only two unknowns. So this system is like you have three equations and two unknowns. And usually these are the tricky one in the sense that you really have to solve the system very carefully. So let me put it here. So you should be getting such a system and you can actually do it quick when you try to directly write the matrix form because you see uh, for such a system, we can always put our two vectors as the columns all the time. We have done many examples already. It's always like this. Let's try to solve this system, but it is easy because the last equation means what? The last equation means this. It means C2 must be zero. It must be. And if you replace it into the, the second equation, you could notice that C1 must be zero also, right? It means if you look at the last two equations, we understand the only solution is both are zero already. So basically it's done. Because when you check the first equation, I think it's obvious. When you replace uh, both solutions zero into C1 and C2, and of course, um, this one must be zero, right? And anyway, uh, this case means um, the only solution um, is C1, zero, and also C2, zero for our current vector equations. And this fact basically means that the answer is yes, these two vectors are linearly independent. And let's look at the last case. Uh, the, to give you more insight to the concept of linearly independence. So please look at this problem. I claim that it's obvious that this is not a linearly independent set of vectors. Of course, you can look at the determinant, like uh, if you list the two vectors as columns, in that case, you're looking at this. And I think it's obvious the determinant is zero, right? It means that they are not independent. And there's another way to look at that. Because you see the fact is um, two times V1 is exactly the same as the second vector V2. And it means what? It means uh, I can easily write V2 minus two times V1 equals the zero vector, right? Uh, this equation means what? This equation means we have actually at least one more solution to this homogeneous system, right? And uh, this is something we don't want. If uh, both vectors are independent, non-zero solutions automatically means that we actually have non-zero solutions to the original um, vector equation here. It basically means uh, our two vectors are not linearly independent. So uh, this simple example just gives you an intuitive meaning that um, for the two vectors to be 
independent. Um, I think definitely we need them to have different directions. And of course, for more number of vectors and high dimensional space, we have to be slightly more careful about that. And that's the end of this video.